Good morning, y'all. It is a beautiful morning here in Phuket town. Phuket. You can see everybody's already up bright and early this morning towards checking out the city's locals getting to work. But what we got planned today is I'm headed right city center to meet our guide. If you've been paying attention to this series, then you know this is the sixth installment of my collaboration with A Chef's Tour. That being said, we're almost to the market right now to meet our guide. For y'all that don't know, it's Max and My Kind of Beats. Let's get today started. No, you okay? How are you, I'm Max? I to meet you, I'm Pema, your Pema. Tour, tour guide nice. today. Just doing a quick little run through of the morning market to check it out before we get that first meal. Yeah. My auntie. Huh? This is my love uncle. Lovely uncle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is my uncle. <laughs> Always one of my favorite sections of every markets in Thailand. All the curry paste right here. Pima said the sour curry paste is her favorite by far. Hopefully we'll try something where I can get a taste of it later. There's so much history in these markets. So many of these vendors have been running it 30, 40, 50 years. We got the dried garcinia here. Oh, big kick of sour. Almost like you got a really sour green apple. You can eat it like the raw one. Mm. So you can try. This is the, uh, how to do it. Oh, there we go. Ooh, I get to try some fermented shrimp paste now. That is fragrant. Super salty. And then you really do get that nice seafood sweetness and nice little funkiness at the end that stays on your palate. Mm -hmm. So the dried out Garcinia is great. It gives you that sourness and it's a lot cheaper than tamarind because tamarind price has been rising because, well, they cut down all the trees. Since we have such a huge Myanmar population here in Phuket, we're actually starting at a Burmese restaurant. Gonna have some Burmese food. Check it out, him working this naan right here. Just rolls it out, pops it in that tandoori, and then he's kind of crazy to me, he pulls it out with his hand. It's been a while since I've had a low stool. It took me a little bit to get down here. And too short. Everything for the kids like that. Pizza! Oh Starting off the main show right here, that naan, that lamb curry, just dripping with oil, spices, and juices. Wow. That is absolutely gorgeous. Fall apart, tender lamb not too fatty you can really taste a high level of protein good amount of chili powder and spice coming from it and just got just enough oil to coat your mouth switching to sweet here we got the myanmar milk tea with a little bit of yo tiao this hits home for me every time when you get those fresh out of the fryer. So good. Adding a little sugar to the dough, so when you dip in that milk tea, it's a great companion. Oh, I gotta go back in for this. We got the naan with the chickpea, lots of fried shallots. The chickpeas just give it that nice creamy umaminess, but really the most flavor comes from all the fried shallots. They've got their actually own doll here. What's fascinating to me is the huge, huge lentils of just... The curry in, in, in India. You, you... you can tell that is actually like a Myanmar type doll because it's not as robust and strong in flavor as say like in India, but it has like a nice subtle flavor, good creaminess, good umami flavor. Myanmar people eat the tea leaves a lot, one bite with one pepper. 
to me Thai style right here, one chili and one garlic clove added to this tea leaf salad. Beautiful crunch from that. Got the peanuts, got the dried shrimp. You get that fresh snap of that chili and you get that flavor bomb with that garlic in there. Man, big bite time. Mm. I know that really looks like it'd be spicy, but I think they add just a touch of sugar to it. You get the tomato in there as well. It pulls back on the heat a lot, but you get a nice sauce that's coating all that. The chickpeas and the dal kind of lacking to me. The real flavor winners for me are the lamb curry and then the tea salad. Mm. Oh. Go is mean sweet, salty sweet. You figure out by your own. Now we're going for a local Phuket style breakfast. You can only find the markets in the morning. It's got the rice pudding, she put a bunch of fried shallots on it, and then that red chili sauce. She drenched it in it, let's put it that way. You see it, and you see that red sauce go all over. I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna have a nice kick of heat. None, no heat at all. It's actually really sweet. You get the creaminess from the rice pudding, the fried shallot flavor, and they may have like just a little touch of sour at the end. Good flavor though. There's a lot of flavor there. Like it just slowly evolves as you chew it and unfolds all the flavor. Take, take out by your own. This looks a lot like cow lamb to me, except it's not an actual bamboo shoot. It's actually wrapped in the banana leaf and grilled. She's not telling me what it is. She said I gotta guess. So I guess we gotta take a bite. Tell me what is it. mm. It's like sugary sweet, but I would not be surprised there's some dried shrimp in there or something. I'm gonna guess the actual texture is maybe some coconut meat as well. Ah, we missed it, we missed it. We were so close. Sugar, coconut meat, the dried shrimp, but there's black pepper in there. I didn't taste the black pepper. We gotta try it. So I'm gonna go back in and try it, see if I can catch it. I think I'm smelling it. I, maybe just because you told me. <laughs> we just missed it. When I want to eat, I have to call her. Auntie, make it for me. Uh, she said can come to her house, he will cook for me. Yeah. My favorite noodles. This restaurant more than 72. She is a daughter-in-law of this family and run this restaurant more than 52 years. Wow. Just gone two weeks ago. We missed some of the best noodles here in Phuket. The auntie is officially closed down two weeks ago. Hey, I'm happy she gets to retire and relax now. I have to make a wish for her. Going for some noodles now, going for some actually Phuket style pad thai. A lot of effort here. She has two pans, one for vegetarian dishes and one for non-vegetarian dishes. So in between each meal, just to run over here and clean it real quick. Well, I can already tell these are gonna be smoky. Oh my, get too close and that will make you cough a little bit. Yeah. And they are done already to no surprise because these are actually called Kwe Tao Gwe, which is gonna be a Phuket style Pad Thai, but ultimately I do think it means just like a quick cook noodle. Look at that, cooked nicely to where you can see the oil kind of coat the noodle. But look at all of everything she threw in there. It's actually clinging to the noodle. I'm paying my respects, get a little bit of everything, just try it before we doctor it up. It definitely needs some doctor. We need some acid, we need some spice, we need some soy sauce. We need to add some things. I got a lot of lime in that bite, so it's really sour. Get a little chili for the heat. A little bit of that egg, it's been fried up. Nice little greasy decadent bite. 
just never my favorite dish, y'all. It's good, it just doesn't take it home for me. But you know we just can't get one noodle dish. We got another one on the way. Go ahead. Now these are a little bit sweeter. You're supposed to add chili to them, but I'm still just gonna try them without anything first to get those pure flavors and pay my respects. Mm. Umami sweet, saucy. I just love a good egg noodle though, the way it's doughy and you can get that little bit just decadency from the egg. Love a good egg noodle. All right, now we got dished up a little bit. Got some chilies in there, a little lime, a little soy sauce. Pak Jang is bamboo leaf. China, they're Zongzi and Malaysia Changzi. And then you can see we're actually doing the Thai version today. Got the rice with all types of things stuffed in it, wrapped in the banana leaves, and then steamed in these huge vessels. You can check the filling inside. What is it? So they got a couple different variations. We got the pork here, but if you open it up, look at all the stuff in here. We got the salted egg, we got the pork sausage, the pork meat, and then we got the dipping sauce here, which is a combination of the fermented soybean paste. It's gonna have the red chili flake, a little tapioca. It's gonna have some vinegar and sugar as well. So the actual dish itself is like salty, creamy, umami, decadent. That's why this is a must sauce dish, because the sauce is the flavor. This is spicy one. The shape is so like a chicken spur. You can call it like a spur chili. It's different. It's spicy. Oh, it's spicy. 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 Yeah, the heat's definitely coming. I'm about to sweat. I may even get the hiccups, but actually at first it's actually really nice and sweet. But once you get into those seeds, that's when the heat comes. But I think I got a mild one. Not too bad. Another species. This is Rick Kaliang. Don't give up. She gave me another one. This one's not as sweet. The heat hits you right away. That first one will creep up on you. This one comes at you right away. Where did this one come from? Out here? Huh? Where, where, this one, yeah. from this. Okay. First, first one. And we got one more come. I'm drenched now. It's very similar to the second one. Comes at you right away. The first one's the hottest because it creeps up on you. You feel like it's not hot, but it continues to come. It's a slow creep up on your heat. The second and third come right at you, but go away fast. Oh. And what goes up must come down. Yeah, that's why I feel too good. Ooh, there goes all that heat. Feel good now. Now you can go back for more chilies. The Thai species, the white species, is Vietnamese species. And they got the Thai dragon fruit. The way you can tell is the pink color. The white is a Vietnamese species. Hmm. I love the pink ones because I swear they're sweeter. The white ones are usually a little more watery, refreshing. We have the mural project to represent our food, our culture, our festival, our daily life. Like this, it show Baba girls in traditional Baba dress and carry the basket because this is market area. This is 78 grandma. This is her house. She is Baba. She wake up 
in the early morning for who make this baba sweet. This one, this is what koi. It's made of the rice flour and brown sugar. This one, this is sakobi. It's made of tapioca pearls, topping with sesame seed and shredded coconut. It's been sweet and harmonized in family because it stick all together, right? This one is the Gao Tian Koi. It has different layers. It's like the ladder, step up, up, up. It's been moving forward. This is Angku Koi. If you go to Malaysia and Singapore, you will find this easily. This is the red turtle sweet. It's been good luck and long life. It's very important sweet in our culture. The, it has the filling inside. Oh, sticky. I'm gonna try one of these sweets right here. Ladies waking up early for a lot of years making these. Black pepper? Yeah! You got it. She wanted me to guess the filling. It's mung bean and black pepper. The outside's kind of chewy, sweet, really combining the baba concepts. So the Chinese come down, they like sweet. For the locals here, they love spicy. So you're getting a spicy, sweet contrast back and forth. That's so weird. I've had more sweet treats with black pepper here in Phuket. I had my life. Yo, I'm editing this video right now and I did not realize it was a long tour. It ended up being six and a half hours of just pure food exploration in Phuket. That being said, by the time I compressed it, it was gonna be about a 40 minute video. And I just, wow, that's a long video. So I thought I'd go ahead and break it into two parts. So this is gonna be the end of part one. Thank you so much for watching. It's been Max and Mike and Beats and I'll catch you at part two. So make sure to stay tuned.